Hey, welcome to my channel. Thanks for stopping by. Today, I have another trash to treasure to show you how to do. And this is a really fun gingerbread man. So if you like this video, I'd really appreciate it if you give me a thumbs up, subscribe, and hit the bell so you'll be notified the next time I upload a video. Now let's get going and let me show you how I Mackenzie Child this paper towel holder up. Now, this was just a really cute gingerbread man that had definitely seen better days. He was obviously well-loved and well-used because he was very grimy and dirty. But, you know, I was looking beyond that and looking at the potential of him. Now, I went to my thrift store on Black Friday and they had everything half off. So they originally had him for $1.99 and I was able to pick him up for a dollar. And I thought for a dollar, we can transform this into an amazingly adorable Mackenzie Child inspired item. So the very first thing I did is I grabbed a Clorox wipe and I just gave him a really good wipe down to get off any germs and as much of the junk as I could. And then I used some of this Deco Art Americana in the light cinnamon color and I just give him a couple really good coats of paint. Because one of the things I didn't care for with him is that he was almost the color of like chocolate milk. And to me, that's just not the right color for a gingerbread man. Now, I actually just made gingerbread cookies last week with my daughter. So hopefully at the end of this week or the beginning of next week, I will show you our hot chocolate coffee bar and this little gingerbread man will be on that. So you'll be able to see exactly how I use them and you'll actually be able to see some of the real gingerbread cookies that we made. Now, as you can see here, I'm just giving this a really good coat of this light cinnamon deco art americana paint now his body has one coat on it so far and i'm getting ready to put the first coat on his face i start painting him and i get him all painted and then i realize his face is actually kind of cute and i kind of regretted painting his face because you know, if you buy something and there's something about it that you really like, you don't necessarily have to remake everything. And whoever painted him originally did a really cute job with it. So after I put on both coats of paint, I then just took my paintbrush and I dipped it in water and then I started brushing over his mouth and cheeks and eyes to bring those back out so that I could actually use those as a template when I repaint his face on. Now, I wasn't keeping the original eyes and mouth and everything, but I was going to use what he already had as a template. Now, here you can see after I've got it all dried and wiped off. And so now I'm gonna go back in with some more of our light cinnamon color and I'm gonna still paint all the way around it. It's just, I'm going to leave this part still showing. Now I wanna make sure that my paint is real thin all around this so that we don't have a thick paint line all the way around his eyes and nose and cheeks and everything. So you want to make sure if you decide to do something like this, just do a really light brush strokes all the way around what's already on there. One thing that you could do if you have something that already has a face on it like this, like this one did, and you didn't want to do it like what I'm doing here, you could take tracing paper and trace it out. And then once it was all painted, then you could take some carbon paper with your tracing paper and reapply it onto your item. I just decided to go ahead and uncover this because it wasn't already dry. My paint wasn't completely dry, so I had plenty of time to still go ahead and do that. Now you can also see that I have some of this paint on his bow and that's not a big problem because I knew for a fact I was not going to keep this bow the way it was. I just hadn't made up my mind what I was going to do with it yet but I knew for a fact I did not want this green bow with these like pink and white flowers on it. 
So getting some of this paint on it, it was not a big deal whatsoever. Now I'm going to use some of this Apple Barrel white paint, and this is in the matte finish. And I'm going to go ahead and cover all this bottom part and the stem or stick that's sticking up here. I'm going to give all this a nice coat of this white paint. And this just really helps to make it look nice and bright and everything. And because nobody would want to be using this the way that it was before, even with wiping it down, yeah, I wouldn't have used it. But having all this nice bright white paint on here, making it all clean and fresh again, that's exactly the look we're going for. Now, once that's all done, now I'm just using some of the same white paint and I'm going to paint his buttons on the front here. And these are so cute. They're kind of like shaped like the candy hearts. And I think that's just perfect for a little gingerbread man. Now I decided I was going to use this paint and go ahead and paint his little bow as well. And so I didn't really like these parts hanging down. And so I'm just going to cut those off and give him a regular bow tie instead of like a more girly type bow with the, the strings hanging down. Now I'm using one of my smallest brushes and right here along his feet, I'm going to finish painting this part white. And you can see I even got a little bit on this one foot and it's not a big deal. We're just going to take some of our light cinnamon brown paint and just go over that again and you can see even up by his buttons and his bow tie that some of the white paint got all over and it's just not a big deal you know if you've watched any of my videos i like projects that if you make a mistake they're easy to correct you just correct them and go on it doesn't ruin the whole project and you can see after a few touch-ups there he's back to looking new again now he's looking really cute and I'm liking him so far. Now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to take some of this deco art Americana in our black paint and we're using our smallest brush which I got this brush at Walmart and this came in a 10 pack for I think it was like four dollars and change and I'm just going to go ahead and paint on his mouth now and you can see this is all I meant when I said I wanted his old mouth to show. We're just going to paint right over the top of it and make it look nice and fresh. But I liked the look of his face before. So I didn't feel like we needed to change the look of his face. And that is good. I'm liking his mouth much better now. And now we're going to go ahead and do the same thing with his eyes, just totally filling in his eye here, all in the black. I'm not worried about painting over the tops of the highlights that are in his eyes or anything. I really just wanted to keep the shapes. And that is almost all covered there. And putting the highlights and everything back in his eyes, it's something very easy to do. So it's not like we needed to keep those on there. So we're just giving this a nice fresh coat of this black. And then we're going to finish up with that bottom part underneath his eye. Just the line that kind of gives him a look like he's smiling. And we're going to do the same thing with his other eye. And then with his nose as well. And now you can see how that is looking. And that is looking so much better. I'm loving the way that looks. And now we're going to grab some of this Deco Art Americana in the Tuscan Red. And we are going to go ahead and go over his cheeks, which are the heart shapes. You're going to find that in a minute, I'm going to redo his cheeks again. Now, the reason for that is, even though I really like the way these turned out, once this paint dried, it kind of dried quite a bit darker than the bright red that it's showing right now while it's still wet. And one of you who are watching me on one of my other videos mentioned to me that if I would have drawn or if I would have painted some red color under some white that I had done, it would have made the white a brighter white. 
So I was thinking, I wonder if doing the white under the red would make the red brighter. So Marilyn, I tried out your idea. And so even though I painted those red to begin with, I'm going to go back through in a minute and paint them white. Now here at the bottom, this is about a three quarter inch piece of wood that he is on. And so I did two lines going horizontal and then I'm doing a bunch of small lines going vertical. And I'm trying to keep all my lines about a quarter of an inch. That is pretty standard for me when I'm doing the Mackenzie Child's courtly check type pattern. I generally, if it's a smaller pattern I'm doing, try to keep it about a quarter of an inch. You can see they're about a quarter of an inch in width as well as in height. That way it just kind of helps keep our squares nice and symmetrical all the way around. Now here you can see I continue to do this all the way around this outside edge of the base of our gingerbread man. And I don't measure, all I do is eyeball it. My lines are not perfect. Your lines don't have to be perfect. And even if you get some of them off just a hair, you can fix it while painting. If it's a little too thick of a spot that you made, just paint on the inside of the line that you drew. If it's a little too thin, then just paint just on the outside of the line that you did. Your squares will, for the most part, turn out fairly symmetrical if you kind of follow that rule. Now, here you can see I'm using our black paint and I'm starting to paint our squares. And what I like to do is I paint about half to three quarter of the square going one direction. And here you can see I'm doing several of the squares doing that. Then I'm going to turn whatever it is I'm working on. I'm going to turn it around and then finish painting that square from the opposite direction. That just helps to kind of keep your square nice and sharp looking on both ends. And you can see this goes fairly fast doing it this way. Now you can see on that very first square, I kind of got a little bit up further than what I want. So a little bit of the black is on the top. That's not a problem. You know that whenever we're putting paint on anything, the first thing is to just get our paint on. And then we go back through later and we'll clean everything up and fix any spots where our paint got a little wild or we need touch-ups or anything like that. Now here you can see that I did the exact same thing all along the top and the edges. And I think it is looking great. Now this is just our first coat on here, but already I think it's looking fairly uniform and really nice you can see there's other spots that we need to touch up like the white paint that's on his foot and everything as well. Now we're going to go ahead and add the highlights into his eyes and I'm going to start out by adding a little bit larger highlight on the outside of the eye and then just a couple little tiny dots on that inside portion. Now the second eye I actually like the way it turned out the first eye, I just got a little too much, so I wiped it off. I kind of blotted that off, and I'm repainting it black, and I'm going to do that eye over again. And while that is drying, I'm just going to start fixing up some of my squares on the back. And now that the black is dry, I'm going to come back in once again and repaint this. Now, you know that if you watch my videos, quite often I show you when I mess things up because I want you to realize that it can be fixed, just paint over it. I don't get upset by them. I just repaint over them and keep on going. It's not a big deal. Now what we're going to do is take our bow tie and I'm just putting lines going sideways all along both sides of our bow tie. Now I'm not doing the center part where my finger is. I'm just doing the two outside portions. And then I'm going to go the opposite direction and making equal lines all the way down that way so that we can also put our courtly check inspired pattern on his bow tie as well. And again, as long as your squares are 
pretty uniformed in size, it's going to look fine. So they don't have to be quite the same size as mine. If you don't want, you can make them bigger, or you can make them smaller, whatever is best for you. I, again, try and keep them about a quarter of an inch. Now I'm just going to grab our black paint and start painting this. Now, when we painted our bow white to begin with, that white paint kind of made that material a little bit stiffer. And so that made it very easy to be able to go ahead and use our pencil and draw on. And so it's not really all that hard to draw on cloth once it's been painted the white. Now you can see we're just coming in here and doing every other square black. And again, I'm just using our smallest brush for this just to give us the most control. And so the very tip of the brush is all I'm using, taking very small little lines. Now I want to come in real close right here because you can see that there's some folds or puckers in our bow. And I wanted you to realize that when we're doing those, I'm not trying to paint or draw on the inside of that fold or anything. I'm only concerned with the part that people can see. So I'm only drawing on the outside or painting on the outside of that fold that people can see. It just gives the impression that inside those folds are that same pattern when they're really not. Now, if there's a part of the fold that's partway open so you can see a little bit inside, I will go ahead and paint that part in whichever color needs to be there. But I don't try and pull the bow open wide or hold it open wide or anything to get down inside there. I just paint the parts that people actually see. And now I have this side of the bow all done. In the center part, I'm just leaving white. Now you can kind of see here his bow tie is done. His face is coming along. And the bottom has our Mackenzie Child Courtly Check inspired print on it. I think he is already starting to really look adorable. I'm loving this. Next thing we're going to do is we're just going to take some of this Master's Touch acrylic paint. And this is in the Light Olive. And I love this color. This color reminds me of Mackenzie Child's green that they always use. And so if you've been to their website before, you'll know that their courtly check pattern is done in the black and white. And as an accent color, they generally use either reds, greens, or golds. And they're just so pretty. And this green just reminds me kind of of that color green. And I use this a lot. So if you've never been to their website, I highly recommend going. They have beautiful stuff. Now, you can see here on his button below that was also colored white, we're going to go ahead and put some more of our Deco Art Americana Tuscan red paint on it. And... This is where I was doing kind of like what Marilyn said, but backwards. She was telling me on a, one of my other projects that if I would have painted the red before I painted the white, I wouldn't have needed so much white. Well, I haven't tried that out, but I did find with this, putting the red over the top of the white, the white made the red much brighter. And you can really see that on this portion of his button compared to his cheeks. His cheeks are much darker once they've dried. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go back in with our white paint and paint over the hearts on his cheeks with the white. And then once that dries, I'm going to go and put the red back over it again just to really brighten up those cheeks. And this really did work. So I, I was very pleased with this idea, Marilyn. So thank you for that suggestion. And you can see here, I've got this heart almost done and I'm just gonna go ahead and do the other one. And then let me show you how this looks now. And you can definitely tell a difference from when these hearts were just painted straight onto the brown compared to now where they're painted on top of that white. Much brighter. And I really, I'm liking that a lot. 
Now I'm just going to take our pencil and I'm going to go ahead and draw some hair on. You can kind of see from the camera view here that a little bit of the white is still showing through. You really can't see that as well to the naked eye, but you can definitely see it more on the camera. I am not using their same hair that they used or the same pattern that they used. I'm doing the same shape, but I'm freehanding it on my own because I couldn't see there's quite enough through the paint. And so I actually, as you could tell a minute ago, I drew it out with my pencil, but once I actually started putting it on with my paint, I didn't even really use my pencil markings. I kind of got off to the side there and did my own thing again, even with the paint. So this is really easy to do. This is something that you can go ahead and practice on paper first before you put it on a gingerbread if you need to. It's just a little loop, a large loop, and a little loop. And now he's looking really cute like that. Now we're just going to do the outline all along him as if we're adding the piping in of the icing. And for this, all we're doing is kind of just going in a back and forth, kind of very fluid type motion. And again, I am not following their pattern for this. I'm just doing what comes natural as I'm going back and forth. That's really the best way to do this because everybody just kind of has their own natural kind of curve as you're going back and forth, adding your piping type look in. And I'm going to just below his bow. That's why I flipped the edge up just a little bit. And I'm not trying to get it way deep down in there, just so it goes to underneath that. And then I just put the edge of the bow right back down. And again, we're just doing the same thing on this side. And then we're going to go ahead and we're gonna carry this right down his entire body and meet back over on the other side again. And like I mentioned to you, I just made gingerbread cookies last week with my daughter. And so if all goes well, I'll finally get the filming done of the coffee bar, hot chocolate bar, and I'll be able to get that put up. And you'll be able to see how I'm going to use our little gingerbread man right there by our coffee bar. So stay tuned, like I said, either at the end of this week or the beginning of next week. I should go ahead and have that all up. Yeah, we made cookies for all the neighbors. I wasn't sure if all the neighbors were going to want cookies this year with all the virus stuff going around. But my daughter and I, we made eight different types of cookies and so, and all the neighbors wanted them, so that was really fun. So I'll show you some of those too when I show you the coffee bar. Now here he is at this point, and you can see how Mackenzie Child, the base of that is looking, and his bow tie, and how adorable he is looking with that white piping all the way around him. I'm loving the way he looks. He's just so fun. Now, the one thing I forgot to do, and it's a little hard holding the camera and trying to paint at the same time because my camera is not on a tripod right now. I am painting in the highlights of his cheeks. Just the extra little dot right there. Just to give him a little bit more of an expression, and I'm liking that. I think that it's the first time I've ever painted and held a camera at the same time. Not positive on that, but that one was a little bit more tricky. I'm loving the way he looks. I'm thinking he is looking just adorable. Let me go and set him by a couple other Mackenzie Child items that I've done in the past. And let me show you how that looks all together. Now, I have videos up on how to make the wine glasses and how to do the teapot. If you're interested in that, I'll leave a link up above and at the end of this video and in the description box. So if you want to go and watch any of those, 
you can. I have over 20 videos of Mackenzie Child inspired items, so make sure you go and check those out. I can't wait to show you guys next week or later this week how he's going to look, where I'm actually going to be using him at. For $1, I think he looks very Mackenzie Child. If you like this video, I'd really appreciate it if you give me a thumbs up subscribe and hit the bell so you'll be notified the next time I upload another video. Thanks so much for watching.